Welcome all of to all the attendees who have just started streaming in, so we'll get this underway. So we know that uh, women represent about 50% of the population, but there doesn't seem to be anywhere near that percentage of full drive tourers. Or could it be that the percentage isn't actually as low as it seems? So the question is, why aren't more women apparently into 4 by 4s Is it a question of nature uh, more than nurture? or nurture more than nature. Now I put a post up on my Facebook page and I got a huge amount of comments and a lot of really interesting points were made there, which has led to this webinar. And it does seem that women are actively in discouraged in many ways from participating. And that's a huge problem. So joining me to discuss women in four wheel drive are three women who have extensive backgrounds in four wheel drive touring. I'm gonna to ask them to introduce themselves starting with Prue. Hello everyone and thank you Robert. Um, I was lucky enough to grow up on a farm and our, um, the, the family vehicle was a Series 2 Land Rover and so I learnt to drive early on and doing farm active, very far, various farm activities. Um, after school started camping and then going hiking and then I thought well I'm getting sick of walking into places like Wanagata, why not get a full drive? So in 1981 or 82, purchased a new BJ40. So that probably ages me a little. And um, and since then, I've owned various um, full drives. Um, in um, 2001, joined Land Rover Owners Club of Victoria. And I'm now also a member of the Range Rover Club and the Gero Four Drive Club. Um, my driver trainer, um, um, and first trip leader was um, um, now my husband. So um, spent 19 years of um, helping to lead club trips um, over Australia, around Victoria, been involved in the committee, um, got involved with um, parks and and DELP, um, learning about how the how bush is managed and how the tracks etc. managed. Um, um, big interests are the environment, our history and how the forests are managed and but just love leading trips, getting out, meeting new people, introducing families to the bush and um, having fun with four-wheel drives. It's really, um, there's loads to do and just constantly surprised that more women don't um, drive. Um, women do so many other things and what's so hard about four-wheel driving? So. Anyway. Thank you so much, Pro. And um, I also believe that uh, when you're in the Land Rover Club of Victoria, the president and the vice president were both female at the same time, leading on from the fact I actually once elected a president who didn't drive a Land Rover. So there you go, open mindedness on behalf of the Land Rover Four Drive Club of Victoria. Okay, thank you for that. Kay, moving over to you. Um, um, let's hear about you, please. Uh, hi, my name's Kay Livingstone, and I'm from Perth, WA. Currently stuck in New Zealand though. Uh, I'm 46 and I've been four wheel driving pretty much all my life. Learned to drive in a four wheel drive, but I've spent more of it as a as a passenger. We had a uh, a shack just up north of Perth, which we had to get to via four wheel drive. So I spent a lot of weekends in the car with Dad, and they'd go convoy, and I'd always be helping to push them out of bogs when they got into bogs. Uh, I'm also a uh, spray painter and I had my own workshop and I've, uh, I've built my own car last year. I built but um, I built one to go four-wheel driving and I guess my real four-wheel driving started seriously probably about 10 years ago because I was sick of being the passenger and uh, I've you know, got my own and I've done as many trips as I possibly can but you're kind of limited when you have children so it's more weekends and shorter trips and was my big year of, of uh, full driving, Cape York and all the way down the East Coast and across the Bight and, yeah, COVID hit. So here we are. 
No, that's great. And I can see your face lighting up when you talk about some of those trips and memories there. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, um, Natasha, let's hear about Hi. you, please. Hi, everyone. Natasha Pomeroy is my name. It's spelt differently, but pronounced the same. Uh, so feel free to also call me Tash. I, uh, my family background is from country in New South Wales, Tenterfield and Glen Ennis, which are lovely little country towns. And, of course, had a strong affinity to all things uh, nature. And I was also really interested in um, cars and particularly like remote control cars as I was a kid and they were lots of fun and I really wanted one, uh, but I wasn't allowed one because they were boys' toys and I was a girl and I was given a China tea set instead. So you can imagine how disappointed I was when I opened up that. It's like, well, what am I meant to do with this? Anyway, so fast forward um, from that point, I was uh, got into hiking and camping and I did a little bit of four-wheel driving, but nothing too major. So so other than a few trips of, say, to Fraser Island um, or, you know, just you know, towing you know, horse floats and that kind of thing, I wasn't really that much into four-wheel driving. I was, liked it but didn't really do it. Fast forward again to about 2015, 2016, we purchased a Land Rover Discovery, as you can see behind me, and we were off-roading some great national parks. And we were shredding tyres like you wouldn't believe because they weren't LT rated and there's very limited um, tyre options in the 19-inch stop rims for Land Rover Discoveries. And so we're sitting around the campfire going, there has to be a better way. So the, the, um, our business was born or the concept of that was born uh, around a campfire of Tough Ant. So 18-inch rims specifically for Land Rover Discovery, but we're also now for Range Rover, and we're, uh, Range Rover Sport rather, and also we're beginning to see them on def the new Defenders as well. So now I was able to flourish in more of that four-wheel drive um, community and I undertook a qualification of four-wheel driving because I thought it was really important that I upped my skills in those areas, like such as changing wheels and just some other little technicalities in there. However, I've kind of slipped into the stereotypical role of being the passenger, uh, which I think is a natural gravitation for a lot of females. And it's something that I've challenged myself on and something that a whole group of us have actually highlighted and went, we have to change this. And we're making a commitment that the, the ladies are going to get behind the steering wheel and make that more of a norm so that we up our, our skills and experience. Okay, thanks very much. Now, audience, um, this is an interactive session. We do have some pre-programmed questions to run through, but if you want to ask a question, please use the question and answer function. Type it up there and uh, we will answer that or discuss that. If you just want to make a general statement or point, you can put that up there as well, or you can use the chat function. So, um, yeah, please make it interactive. All right, so let's kick off then with um, the first uh, question. And... Um, that's really this sort of stuff. It's um, um, really the nature versus nurture question. So the first question is, from a young age, boys and girls are stereotyped with blues and pink, soldiers and dolls. How much does this nurture affect girls who want to enjoy activities which are typically stereotyped for boys? And Perry, I'd like to direct that one to you first, please. Right, okay. Um, well, I suppose... I was never interested in dolls. Um, I ended up playing with my younger brother, um, playing with trucks and Meccano. Um, and it just, my some of my earliest memories are actually of engines and vehicles. And um, so perhaps I'm a little bit um, out, of, out of different there. But, um, and being on the farm, I was able to, and um, able to play with, um, vehicles and you know take a part in the farm but it was just mum and aunties and grandmothers were all you know out there doing things so it was just all part of what was um normal I suppose for me so I think that I was lucky in in that regard. Okay so you're lucky. Um, Natasha was that your experience as well were you sort of um lucky like, like Prue was or did you get stereotyped a bit? Very much stereotype. Lucky that I had a lovely family, of course, um, and they thought they were doing the right thing, but very much steered in certain directions. So you could be told on one hand, you can do anything, you know, anything you put your mind to, you can do it. But 
you can't do that. Don't do that. So I was interested in truck driving. Oh, no, 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 no. Girls don't do that. You, you can't play with toys like um, cars and that kind of thing. So, yes, I was very much steered um, into a different direction. I don't think it was, it certainly wasn't malicious in any way, but there was definitely that gender role coming through. Was it overt? Was it literally, oh, you can't do that? Or was it uh, more subtle? Uh, there was definitely both there. There was the overt, um, for sure. It was explicitly said, that's a boy's toy. I remember that distinctly because I was so disappointed that boys got to play with those fun things. Well, what I saw was fun. I also enjoyed other things like the cooking and all of that. That's fun as well. But I get terrible FOMO. So when I see, you know, other people playing with the remote control cars or, you know, all of those great, really active stuff. And I felt like I was missing out um, and because I, I couldn't um, participate in the full way. Yeah, okay. Um, Kay, what's your experience been with, with that um, question? Uh, outright, it's a, girls aren't allowed. When I wasn't allowed to do a lot of things because I was a girl. Like we had that shack at Wedge and all the kids would be riding around on motorbikes and, you know, the, the kids would be driving cars and, we wouldn't be allowed to, not us girls. We weren't allowed to do anything. We had to stay at home. And I, I always tried to, you know, go and play with the boys wherever I could, but I'd often be told I had to go and play with the girls. Yeah, it was really, yeah. I always wanted to, I didn't, never wanted to be a boy, but I just wanted things to be easier for girls. And I grew up very much a tomboy and very much rebelling and very much getting into trouble. Like I wanted a push bike and I couldn't get a push bike until I was 15 years old. I crapped on about it for so long, I think they finally felt sorry for me. But, you know, I, I didn't want to play with dolls. I wanted cars, remote control cars, and I, I didn't get them. I couldn't have them, I wasn't allowed them. And I, I'd kind of hang out in the shed with the guys or when, you know, the males are talking about cars and stuff because I've always been interested in cars. I've been car books home from the library and things. And um, you could, if they were drinking, you could kind of get in a little bit further and listen a little bit more until they, you know, then they, they'd send you off again, you know. Yeah, my, 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 my. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, thanks, Kay. So, Pooh, back to you. So, okay, so this stereotyping goes on. Um, what effect does that have um, on women later in life? Um, does it, can you shake it off? Is it something which happens in your formative years and then it's difficult um, to work with later in life or, or, or not? Uh, well, it really is, it's interesting. Um, what people, over, over the years and I've, you know, working with different people and people always remember me because I'm always going on about four-wheel driving as if it's something different. <laughs> um, I just think it's it's normal, but um, there's women who come on trips who express, oh, I'd like to be involved in their, that, but that's my husband's thing or my partner's thing, um, and it's whether people have the opportunity, um, they're actually encouraged to take part. Um, some driver trainers I know have actually worked out a way to encourage people to, um, to women to, to drive. Um, I think that there's some extremely capable and competent um, women for drivers in the clubs that I'm in, and they're far more competent than me. They do all sorts of um, really tough things, and um, they're out there, and whether it's personality, whether it's nature-nurture, I'm not sure. Um, I just, um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I think it's, you know, there's lots of women involved in um, bushwalking and in horse riding and they're all, you know, going out doing really tough, tough things and using four-wheel drives and, but it's, um, um, you know, I think just it should be commonplace. I don't see, I, I do get cross about the... Um, the advertising because I think it's really very stereotypical and that that makes me quite angry. I think we've we've got you know, money too. Uh, our money should be just the same as all the other money. So it um, it um, there's a lot of that stereotyping that goes on. Um, whether you know, not all women are interested in vehicles. Um, 
but it and you don't have to be interested in a vehicle it's just a matter of enjoying being out in the bush and and um taking a part in it i think it's um it's a, um, a lot of society's expectations that probably stop women being more involved perhaps Okay, now there's quite a number of female-only groups for full driving and female trips and so on. Um, why do they need to exist? Because there must be some reason why women are going, you know what, we just need to do this without men around. So I direct that first to Kay. What, what, what's behind that? It's because men don't let us do it. Men don't, they, they like... But like I had to go and listen in to the guys when they're working on cars. They're not going to allow me to actually participate in that. I have to listen quietly. And I find women, I've, I'm, I've trained a few women up, you know, and they really know what they're doing. They just don't trust themselves. They just don't have that confidence. And, I, you know, the very first choice that they make is the right choice and they second guess themselves because they've always got a bloke in there nitpicking. What did you do that for? What did you do? I wouldn't have done that. What, you know, let me do it. They slap you out the way. They don't, they don't give you a chance to fumble. And I think when you're learning something, you need to fumble and not be laughed at, not be scoffed at, not be put pressure on. And I find men also can get a bit... Um, uh, like heated they don't stay calm and you just need to have a calm environment and and girls learning with girls is, is really necessary i think at this point until until we are equal and we are accepted okay all right uh, natasha so um what's your view as to why women feel the need to create female only areas groups etc what, what's behind that yeah, I think there's there's a really good re good reason for those groups. I mean, the fact that they exist says something. Mm -hmm. And being able to create or be in a safe environment to ask those questions um, and know that you're not going to be rebuked, you're not going to be put down, laughed at, um, is, is really important in the learning um, of this because we're often coming to this later in life as well. So you may not have been brought up with it. So the learning curve can look more like a cliff face. And uh, so therefore, you know, having that safe environment to ask those really fundamental questions that perhaps in the male or the co-ed groups, if you like, um, it might be assumed, well, you should already know that by now. Um, so, you know, you can have that safe place. And I've seen that in other activities as well, such as hiking, the female only groups where they can be really supported in those, um, those when you're starting out in those areas so yes there's definitely a place I'd like to see more of it in the co-ed groups um, but we're, we're, it's a journey <laughs> yeah all right so is what we're seeing here a vicious circle where women kind of haven't had the necessarily the upbringing and the opportunities to learn about mechanical things or cars and so forth then because of that maybe they're less confident then when they do try they get nitpicked or whatever word you want to use or discouraged and then that leads to just less confidence and less ability to less inclination to try and therefore the reason that the groups have come up is to break that cycle and to go to places look this is somewhere where I can ask questions do things and I, I'm not I don't feel put down on is, is that kind of what's happening yes I I have to although I my experience is there are a number of groups that are very supportive um, and they're ones that I'm active in as well. Uh, so that they are the co-ed groups too, but yeah. I certainly understand the need for the, the female only groups and why people would gravitate towards them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kay, what do you think of that cycle I just described there of sort of that vicious circle of um, women lacking confidence to begin with and then having that confidence further eroded and then it even less confidence? Yeah, I just think uh, men and women operate a little bit differently and men very much have a pecking order and they know where uh, they fit in that and, and women aren't in the pecking order and it's really hard to get in there. And then you have to be, you have to be twice as good to even be noticed as well, like, you know, let alone not, not knowing, like, like you say, we haven't grown up in that environment and I think part of the, the girl groups is also camaraderie in this as well you know that we don't we're, we're very um you know 
women are kind of all over the place on this. We need to come together and, and it's good to see us coming together on that. And I think the more that we do, the better it will be, but it, we're still a long way from being equal, that's for sure, and, and, and being in on that, um, the pecking order that, that happens. And I've been on a few all drive trips, quite a few, and very, very few where the women are driving. Even like it, it's only in the pretty much only in the all women groups, and then very, very few in the co ed groups. It's always ladies generally in the passenger seat with the male driving. Okay, what in sort a, of um, what sort of discouragement have any of the three of you act? Um, seen or experienced personally and what sort of effect does it have i'd like to just get some examples here to flesh this out a bit so um Prue, could i start with you please oh i i think i've been lucky um probably but um i suppose in the the growing up part um the brothers and cousins and an uncle and dad they were the ones out in the machinery shed doing all the, the mechanical things um, my, myself and girl cousins, we were involved in driving and doing all sorts of other things, but um, the actual mechanical part, um, and I suppose I didn't feel excluded, it's just I wasn't perhaps interested or invited, um, and it would be very easy, I think, in um, different settings to... Um, to feel that you were excluded. Um, I Probably because of my husband, John, and his reputation in the clubs, whether I've been a bit protected because of that from some of the, um, from some of the, the comments about it. Um, and I don't make a thing of it. Um, all, um, I've, we've sometimes run um, women, um, ladies driving trips, but it's, inviting everyone, all the family along as well. Um, but it's just, they're the same trips that we, you know, always do anyway. Um, and they're always popular. I've had people who've been in clubs for a number of years actually drive on their first trip, knowing that it's, uh, okay. you know, ladies are, are welcome. But I haven't had that other experience. Okay. Natasha, have you seen or experienced any discouragement or harassment? And what effect has it had? Yeah, good, good question. Um, the, the discouragement is, you know, started off in the early years and it certainly wasn't maliciously intended, um, but there was certainly the, the steering towards female things and not to the driving um, aspect of it. And more recently, whilst we've seen a shift in society towards equality, which is marvellous, we're still also on a catch-up mode. So advertising is a prime example of that. Also in the service industry as well. So if you go in there, just say you're in a male-female couple and you, you go into whether it be a sales yard or into the mechanics, they'll naturally talk to the male and not to the female um, in the group. So there's the, the perpetuating of that gender um, thing. And then you've also got those comments, just really casual discrimination um, comments like, you know, oh, you drive like a girl when they might say that to a male or, uh, you know, just, and the memes that come out are, are sometimes, yeah, uh, are quite off-putting uh, with some things. So you become less likely to have conversations or discussions or raise questions in those forums that have, you know, continually having those kind of memes and jokey blokey kind of uh, approach. Okay. Um, Kay, what, what have you got to add to that? What examples of discrimination or um, discouragement or even harassment have you seen and what effect has it had? Uh, I think the latest one was uh, a guy who said, you know, there's a bitumen road a few k's that way, which I thought that was really offensive. And it was kind of funny because he was in a crew that were learning, you know, so I just drove down a really good line and, and did really well. But that was that was a few months ago, essentially, you know. But just the ignorance, uh, they will ignore you and, and like you're nothing or nobody, like uh, in the shops especially. That, that's a huge one uh, in, like, the, the yeah, the girls' all drive uh, crew. I asked them, you know, uh, what sort of discrimination they face and the biggest one is walking into the shop and people not talking to them, the, the salespeople not talking to them. 
real shame because um, these girls are really serious about their full driving and pimping out their cars and camping and stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, Natasha, you mentioned something about memes there as well. So there's memes such as um, one was going around recently. So I think it was... Um, if, if you can't drive an 18-speed um, truck, then um, you've on Father's Day you've got two mothers or something, something like that anyway. Yeah. So uh, some people would look at that and go, oh, that's just a, a joke. Um, you know, what's the problem with that? Why can't you just laugh it off? Um, what is the problem with, with that? Okay. What, what, why, why does that damage? Yeah, it's, it's really important that we don't lose a sense of humour, but is that actually funny? And if you turn that round into, rather than a gendered thing, put it into a racial context, would that still be funny? Would that still be accepted? And I would say no. And I think it's time that we no longer accept that for gender as well. Okay, what, what would you add to that? Yeah, well, that's, it's reinforcing that uh, general social conception that women aren't as good as drivers, when in actual fact, you know, like say in the mining industry, they prefer women drivers because they look after the gear. And mm. that's what I find with the ladies, they're a lot more cautious and they can be quite aggressive in their driving and what they do, but they're still really wary about their equipment as well. Uh, whereas some of the guys, when they uh, are out there, they're just really gung-ho, you know. Mm. And, yeah. Yeah, and um, it's interesting, but... Um the problem with those little jokey memes here and there about, um, and even the comments like you drive like a girl or you've got two motors or anything, individually they're kind of nothing, but it's just chip, 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 chipping away. And if you think about it, that's actually how advertising works. It just shows you something here, something there, something there, something there. And before you know it, your mind your mind is changed. And an example I can draw that we're all probably familiar with from four-wheel driving is um, there are that many memes about Land Rovers leaking oil, etc. Yeah. Now, it just goes on and on and on. Now, now, that's not a person, so who cares, right? But Land Rovers don't actually leak oil anymore. I mean, the modern ones, they're, they're just the same as, as, as any other car, but that still perpetuates. Um, and then that's in everyone's mind. People come in new to four-wheel driving and then they learn this and then they repeat it. And to my mind, that's kind of the same as this sort of repeated tiny little joke here and here, it wears away. Um, what, what can we do about it? So I'm going to do, uh, direct that first of all to, to Prue. So, so what can we do about this sort of culture chipping away at female confidence? Okay. Um, recently, um, ARB, and I'll mention them because they're an ASX listed company, global company, and um, full drive modifications. They were really called out um, because um, up until, and whether it was the 30th of June this year or, or last year, for not having a woman on the board and um, because that really affects, um, negatively affects um, the bottom line. I noticed they now do have a woman on the board, but I really think that their advertising, a lot of advertising is very anti-female. Um, well, it's just the blokes or the blokes and their little daughters go out camping and, and forward driving. I think that's that's bad. I just think that it's, um, whether it's the way young men are being brought up um, these days as well, I just think that it's wrong. The Queen was driving trucks in World War Two. What's so hard about it? I just think it's just unprofessional, bad society, and I think it's leading to... Um, a lot of bad behaviour in the bush as well. I'm really on my soapbox because I think that it's if you have family groups out there, um, it just helps civilise um, the, the bush. And I think women have a lot of spending power and I just think it's great. I remember Annie talking about when she was wanting to get um, you know, rock sliders for her full drive and, and other women um, just out there doing things and, and enjoying it. Um, EJ doing the big solo trip in a, in a Defender um, and, you know, very much into cars and doing things and, and women just doing it. And I think that these blokes who and, and boys who do that, I think, are really bad. I know that um, when, when we're on tracks and I've got a convoy of nine vehicles behind me and 
you know, we're meeting other other convoys and who's going to back up and whatever. Um, a lot of men are a little bit surprised when they see me, you know, directing the situation and, and that sort of thing in a, in a quite a capable vehicle. And I just, um, the more women involved, the more money can be spent because it's um, once, once women know the importance of a lot of these modifications, um, the driving safety, et cetera, um, it's, you know, it's a no brainer to me. I just think it's, you know, fun when, Women start learning how to, to drive the four-wheel drive. They really enjoy it and, and love it. And I think that then it's a great example to their daughters, etc. and a lot of them get involved in outdoor recreation, um, you know, um, as, as far as, well, recreational um, um, activities as far, and also um, professional activities. So I just think that... Oh, 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 so... Um Leading on to that, then making a point about familiarity, there's um, read a bit of background about it, and there's no racist or sexist babies. Both of those isms are entirely learned, 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, it generally happens that you're brought up that way, but also it's a lack of familiarity because if you are used to seeing, mm -hmm. let's say, I don't know, black people in business or women driving four wheel drives or whatever it is, then that becomes normal. And then less inclined to discriminate them so would part of the solution be to have more women more visible doing things in the four-wheel drive industry there's a comment about um doing something other than quote hanging their asses out on instagram unquote um so doing you know things like driver training delivering lectures that sort of thing would that would that help yeah definitely okay yeah, for sure. Like the work that Prue's doing and all the work that she's done like over the years with leading all these, um, the, the different uh, drives and holidays and things, uh, it's fantastic. And representation does matter. Um, so whether it's on the board or on the advertising billboard or in the bush, you know, representation matters. Um, so the more that you see it, the more that it's a norm, the less it's a, you know, ah, oh, the double take, it's a female or, you know, it, it's just becomes part of norm. Okay. All right. So Jessica's just made a really good point. You can't be it if you can't see it. And I think that's, yeah, absolutely. We all need someone to go, yeah, that person is, is like me and they're out there um, um, doing it. Yeah. Okay, so how do we get more women into more visible roles? Where's the next um, crew going to come from leading, you know, how many cars across Australia from here to here? Where's the next Natasha going to come from who's going to be starting a four-wheel drive business? Where's the next Kay who's going to open up her own panel shop and fix four-wheel drives? Um, how, how do we fix that? Oh, gosh, that's such a complex question. Um, and it has a complex answer. And it's not something that we can completely solve tonight. But having these conversations like tonight is a start. Um, so, you know, with the great work that you also do, Robert, on your webinars, you know, having more females just as the norm in, in the panels, you know, that's great, giving voice. Um, so females have a voice and, and they're listened to as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, whether it's grassroots and bringing up your children, but there's also, that's the next generation. There is also something in this generation as well. So, for example, the, what I spoke about earlier, how I've just naturally fallen into that stereotypical role of sitting in the passenger seat going, hang on, why am I not in the driver's seat? Isn't it, you know, it's fun to be in the driver's seat to do this stuff, but it's also safer to have two skilled drivers. And the only way that you can get skilled is through experience. And you only get experience by doing. So taking the, the you know, having this the discussion with your, your partner or the different groups. And this is exactly what we've done. There's a group of us and we've all actually highlighted it as an issue. And we've all committed that we're going to be doing more of that driving. And I'm going away this Saturday so I can report back how much driving I'm going to do on the holidays. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then, you know, even you know, different things like, you know, reversing and being, you know, reversing with trailers, for example, which is quite, challenging um, to do at times. So getting that practice up. So representation and actually having those conversations and then doing. Okay. All right. So for the men out, because this is probably, it's a problem that's got to be tackled by, um, I think, both genders. Um, and I think there's things both 
genders could do. So I want to go around each of you now and ask you what behaviours you think men should change and what behaviours you think women should change to address this. So I'd like to start with you, Prue, just give us your top two for what you'd like to see change with some men and what you'd like to see change with some women. Oh, that's, um, that's interesting. Um, yeah, direct I, questions here, sorry. Yes, yes no, that, that's, that's all right. I, I think that, um, well, women just being more assertive and just, um, you know, taking the, the lead role in, in it. Um, I think that men, um, well, realise that the whole four-wheel drive experience would be a whole lot richer if... Um, if women were actively involved um, in all the all the decisions around it, um, and perhaps whether men could make the idea of camping more attractive to to women, that seems to be oh you know my, my wife my partner she she doesn't like camping well why doesn't she because camping these days can be really quite luxurious compared to what it uh, it used to be very comfortable so I think that it's um, men actively seeing what they're missing out on by um by doing that so whether it's um um you know even at school um you know some electives on basic mechanics for that directed towards women um I, 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 okay so I'm, I'm talking here of your average male four-wheel driver your average female just sort of things we could do for that if you were to say all right guys generally stop doing this start doing that Value us, value our knowledge, value our experience, value, just value us. I, I feel we're not valued. I feel we're just shunted off to the side. We're just an appendage that's there maybe to cook, to pack, to, you know, obligatory clean the car at the end of the day. We actually know a lot and we can actually do a lot, but you've got to step aside and let us do that or give us room to, to come to the fore a little bit. I think they, they, the boys take up way too much room and they need to step aside. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Natasha, your response to what you'd say women need to start doing, stop doing, and men need to start doing, stop doing? I think um, the, the men need to, well, A, stop the lady jokes. Um, that needs to absolutely stop. Um, but beyond that, the listen and encourage. Okay, so I think that's really important, just the stop and listen. Sometimes females need to have a bit of space to be able to give... Uh, give themselves permission to have a voice around that too. So listen and encourage from the men. Um, from the women, I would say um, step out of your comfort zone a little bit. It's safe in the passenger seat and ask yourself why you're staying there. If you like forward, like going out camping and getting off road, why are you staying in the passenger seat? So really dig deep around that. In fact, I would encourage males to ask themselves why as well. Why is your wife sitting in the passenger seat? Why are they not, you know, partaking actively in those discussions around those things? Uh, because it could be stemming from something right back to early gender, you know, conditioning. Um, and they are actually interested. They just haven't given themselves permission now to do it. Okay. Now, um, I'd like to leave, uh, ask a positive question. So where have you seen positive examples of women being encouraged to get into four-wheel driving and do traditionally male things, and, and why has that been effective? So, Proof, could briefly ask you that? Right. Um, well, four-wheel drive Victoria, I know, have um, run some ladies-only um, driver training classes, and I know that some um, four-wheel drive clubs do the same, and some run um, ladies only trips and I think that's where I've seen that happening. I know that in some of the clubs some of the, the women are great um, um, well role, role models and um, and I think that that's that's really good as well taking leadership roles and on the track and um, in, in the clubs so that's Okay. Um, Kay, where have you seen positive examples of, of women being encouraged into four-wheel driving? Uh, I, I don't know about being encouraged into four-wheel driving. I, I think women are encouraged uh, generally. I'd like to think that um, 
it's positive on the whole. It's just not equal yet. But uh, the the girl groups, like, yeah, the girls, uh, 4 by 4 that's Australia-wide, and what they do together is amazing. And it's really great to see this uprising of women coming together in all states and going out together and learning together and pushing together. I, I really think that's wonderful and that they're my heroes. Okay. And, Natasha, where have you seen positive examples of women being helped or encouraged into four-wheel driving? Uh, in, some, in some of the Facebook groups, uh, not all, certainly not all, but in some there is definite encouragement of people, of females to be involved. It is generally somebody's wife or partner um, that's there, uh, but we're beginning to see a lot more female activity um, in that. So it, it is good to see that encouragement come through. Um, also those um, female only ones groups which I'm only relatively new to learning about but they're they're doing tremendous work too um, in, in encouraging females to get out there and try uh, I think that work is, is definitely worthwhile yeah okay so let's talk about the advertising then um, because a lot of that is very much focused and in fact a um, friend of mine I think he's on it actually hi Dave um, sent me a screenshot and it was something about um, a testosterone laden ute um, which is probably fairly well targeted there now I can tell you personally I actually get sick of overly macho advertising and focus um, and it doesn't do anything for me I know it doesn't do anything for a lot of blokes but um, how much how off-putting is, is that, that for, for women? I'll start with, um, with you, Kay. Uh, I'm so against it. Like, I see it in my trade as well. And there's a lot of uh, women tradies like me who are just so cross about, like, where they advertise tools and advertise stuff with these women that are just not normal. Because, you know, normal. It, it, it serves to... Um, keep women in check as in you know you have to be this thing and and we're always trying to attain this thing you know that they're, they're, they're constantly putting these pictures up of how we should be and we don't we, there's always this bit of us that doesn't feel quite right because we don't look perfect we don't have the perfect nails down the perfect hair we don't you know and we have to break out of that first and it's the media that are, are, are keeping us in check in that way and it so it's not just for the men to look at it's actually to keep women a bit suppressed so it's extremely extremely offensive and it's um it's it's bad very bad yeah okay um natasha how, how do you feel about the um i guess very macho oriented advertising for a lot of things so i guess it's not even that it's like virtually every four-wheel drive image you see used in advertising will have a bloke between aged 30 and 50 and someone mentioned somewhere else that some um, about um gay four-wheel drivers um i don't think i've ever met uh anyone who's gay and into four-wheel drive um and i think that's a shame because there must be a lot of them out there why don't we hear about it i would like to hear more about them um and it's the same way i mean um you see like muslim and hindustan and other minorities there. I know they're out there. I've seen some of their clubs. Um, where are you guys? You know, we need to be more more diverse here. Uh, if I'm going to dig out for a second, it's like I believe a huge amount in diversity because it gives you strength and power. So if you're going to go forward driving, you wouldn't take a high lift jack, an exhaust jack, a bottle jack, and a scissor jack. That's five different types of jack. You'd take five different types of recovery again. It's exactly the same in forward driving. If you look at the diversity of the human race, then, um, you know, we've all got strengths and weaknesses. Women are better at some things than men, vice versa. You put it together, you become more powerful. So I'd really like to see more diversity in forward driving. You know, so I've actually forgotten my own question now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, 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 what's about the advertising. And, oh, um, yeah, that's right, advertising, yeah, yeah, give us your answer on that, yeah. I think it's it's a hard one to answer because is it a the chicken and the egg scenario because the the companies that are marketing that way, that way will say well the stats are telling us it is ninety nine percent male they yeah, are yeah, yeah but, but you know the problem with that which yeah. which is that if you target it that's what you're going to get exactly, <laughs> exactly. so it, it is that the whole chicken and the egg now running our business with tough hand you know we've 
you know, deliberately stayed away um, from anything like that. I mean, we strongly encourage customer picks, um, which we love. We love seeing our product out there. And they are generally males that are sending them through. But we really try and stay away from a lot of that, that stereotype hype. Um, around it so uh, yeah it's a uh, it's a tough one with those big organizations how do you break them from you know continuing down that same path well maybe they could try it maybe they could say look instead of another 30 to 50 year old bloke um, let's put some women in there and a woman is going to be doing something other than reaching into the fridge to hand a bloke a beer how about that um, <laughs> and um, I don't know we'll, we'll, we'll have someone um, from a Muslim background or something else, or two two blokes instead of a bloke and a woman. How about that? I mean, let, let, let's really push the boat out. You know, get exciting with the world in in twenty twenty here. Okay. Yeah. yeah All right, now another question has come up, which um, we're going to wrap this up in a minute and just take take a couple more points and questions. Which is that um, um, is there something about four wheel driving which skews the gender towards male more? Because is that do we see this sort of gender bias in other types of car interest? And um, I've got interests in other types of cars other than four wheel driving. I'm going to use the example of the Tyler 86 BRZ groups, which um, I was actively involved in um, as club members and committee members and organizing training courses and things like that. Um, the percentage of females in those groups is way, way higher way higher it's probably even approaching 50 percent but it's much less here um are, any comment on that any any view as to why why that would be um let, let's start with you Kay, because because you've got a background in quite a few different things yeah i i just think uh for me i can only say from my point of view and um and there's other women like me who are sole parents or who have children and a lot of your budget and your time goes to the children and you don't have a lot left over for activities with cars that it can be quite expensive. And the main reason I've been able to be involved so heavily is because I had my own workshop. I could fix my own car. I could find people who could fix my car, you know, it, so it made it a little bit simpler. I could have my kids at the workshop with me. I, I designed it like that, but it's not so simple for most women, especially like, you know, the, the girls' uh, groups that are coming up, they're a lot younger. They've got a lot younger children. They've got to have car seats and they've got so much more to think about than what they really love. That gets put a back seat and it may be something that comes out a little bit later in life or when you have the support of a partner. Mm. Okay, good. All right, so I start to close it up then. So um, we're going to ask each three of you for a closing statement as to... Um, what you'd like to see happen from here? Because clearly there's an issue we've got to fix and, and um, what would you like to see happen? So I'll ask you to, to close up with that, um, starting um, with yourself, Natasha. Uh, representation. So that's, yeah. bit, <laughs> that's my soapbox. So, and it's, you know, a decision. It's not just out there that other people need to do. It's also me, like what I need to step up and do. So give myself permission uh, to drive and get that experience. Okay. Okay. I'd like to see other men sort other men out, actually, um, because I can't do it. I, I can only say as much as I can say. So I would say I would like to see more women speak up and practice speaking up. Like my big thing is, well, you need a Sheila to show you how to do it, you know, or if I go into a shop and a guy's not, you know, you know, if I want something and they're not speaking properly to me, I will tell them, don't they know how to speak Sheila and quite loudly and aggressively. I think more women need to speak up and be confident. But my biggest thing is I want to see men help men and men men tell men where they're going wrong and pull men up when they when they're saying those comments that we're not liking and putting those memes out. They need to make that not right, and other men need to do that. Okay, and Pro? Um, well, I suppose um, from my background, I think that. Um, from the club's point of view and also the peak body for Dry Victoria, um, it's a Victorian focus on that, um, to really, um, instead of having, yes, it's okay for, for women to drive, to actually really promote it in a very positive way and really have quite a, well, not just women, but a whole diversity thing and because to me, full driving is adventure and everyone likes adventures um, and, and to really um, to 
for leaders in the area um, to play a real leadership role in um, perhaps having some brand ambassadors, thing, things like that, to really make it make it happen. Because I, I think the land managers would prefer it as well because um, there's a lot of issues with um, vandalism and, um, and crime in the bush that uh, they'd like to see stopped as, yeah. as well. Okay, well, um, so to the audience, this has been a really interesting session. I intend to do a lot more work in this area, but what I need is your help. So... I need your anecdotes, I need your experience, I need your suggestions, your comments, and what I'm going to do is start to put it all together and sift through and find the common themes and then start to look for solutions and um, start to put that out there and get the conversation started through my work as a writer, creating videos or whatever else. So you know where my Facebook page is, you know where my website is, my YouTube channel, get on there and get the conversation started and look forward to hearing from you all. Um, and I will be writing about this. So if you've got something you want to be promoted about a women's only four wheel drive group or a gay four wheel drive group, or whatever else, um, let me know about that. So thank you all for watching and thank you, Natasha, Prue and Kay for giving up your time and coming on it. I know it wasn't easy to do that. I um, really appreciate everyone who's been watching on Facebook um, here as well. This will be recorded, has been recorded and it will be up on my YouTube channel shortly. And as I said, I look forward to hearing from you all in the future how we can progress this forward. Thanks very much all and enjoy your four wheel driving no matter what gender you are. See you again. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. Robert.